Hey guys, this is Adventuring Beside You. And today we wanted to tell you a little bit about one of our dreams as a family, and uh, that is moving to Japan. So we're gonna talk about uh, why we want to, what we've been doing, and how we're trying to go about it. So hang tight, and uh, here we go. So the idea for us wanting to go to Japan, specifically for me, started when I was a young girl. Actually, when I first learned like what Japan was, I became very interested in basically everything about Japan. Um, and that, that had stayed with me. I mean, in college, I was studying Japanese culture and language and uh, had, had intended to go to Japan at that time. So as a girl, like ever, everyone would give me gifts, like big Japanese fans and stuff like that. And that was like decoration of my room um, because it was just always a dream of mine. And even houses, like I, I had only really dreamed of one house that I ever really wanted um, growing up and even to this day. And it was styled after like a machia, which if you're not familiar with those, those are like the older Japanese wooden structured buildings. Like they have like prettier styled roofs with like I think I've seen them with like more of like the slanty shingles and stuff like that it's they're really beautiful uh, I would still absolutely adore having a machia that would be really cool so maybe maybe I'll get to have that and you guys will see one day I don't know <laughs> so that'd be great <laughs> and uh, but yeah that so that's been something that has been dreams and goals of mine since I was a little girl. So this was nothing that is new to us or my family. My family was not surprised when we said that we were moving to Japan. My, my family was sad, but they're also like, yeah, we kind of knew. <laughs> so it, w it was not new for um, me and Tommy when we met. If you haven't watched our other video about um, how we met at an anime Bible study. We both love anime and of course that's not the only part of Japanese uh, life that we like. To move to Japan over anime would be a little bit naive. Um, that's that's such a big decision over a, a whole culture and people and so um, but yeah we, we met and he loved anime. He loved Japanese culture uh, so if you didn't know that we're big fans of different art styles of Japanese culture and stuff so um, but we first came up with the idea while Tommy was looking for a job, um, his kid's current job, and uh, how did that happen? So about four years ago, I was looking for the job that I'm currently at now. And um, if you haven't watched our other video, which was who we are and just kind of like our intro, uh, I am a programmer manager right now. I manage programmers um, and I by trade am a programmer. So I have a nice skill set that fits in a lot of places across the world. I'm very lucky and blessed in that way. And um, so as I was looking for jobs, uh, I came across this one job board that had listed a job in Tokyo, Japan as a programmer. And I just looked at Alicia and I just kind of laughed and I was like, wouldn't that be cool if we went to Tokyo and worked in Japan and lived in Japan? And we both just kind of were like laughing for a second about it. And then it was just this moment of like, oh. We both got silent, yeah. actually. What happened was like, you were like, wouldn't it be kind of cool if we did that? And we were like, ah, ha, ha. And then we just kind of paused and it got quiet. And we both kind of looked at each other. Just kind of like, well, what if we did? Yeah, like, what if we actually did go? And at the time, I think it was a little bit just like too shocking, almost too terrifying. It's like, if you have a dream, I don't know if anybody has a dream or can relate to this, but like when you actually have like that dream that's always felt like a fairy tale or so far off, and then you just, you come face to face with it. And it's like, oh, it's actually, for us at least, it was like, kind of scary, right? It was just like, oh, we could actually go do this. And so at the time, I don't think we were just bold enough to even approach it. And um, it was good too, just for all the things we had to take care of. But uh, we got it in our heads then that we could actually move to Japan. Mm -hmm. 
And so from that point on, it turned from that fairy tale into, let's do this, let's make this happen. So as, um, as we started looking into like more seriously moving to Japan, some of the things that we looked at was first we had the job which kind of led us into these things. Um, but we also had to look at visas and we had to look at like which visa would be right for our family because there's like we considered a uh, work visa through either artistry or Tommy's work um, or we had considered like a startup uh, visa. We decided what was right for us was to do a highly skilled foreign professional visa which um, we believe that Tommy is currently qualified for and uh, that will give us a shorter period of time before we would become permanent residents and so it would be one to three years instead of the typical 10 years under that plan. So um, yeah, that's currently what we're going for. Um, and we, we started by researching like, okay, so the different types of visas and how will this go with the job? Um, and that led us into like looking into well, what kind of housing is in Japan. I mean, we researched a lot of things like, um, I don't know, like life in Japan with social security, with health, what that, what's that going to look like? Because it's, it's a big decision when you're moving to another country. It's not something that should be taken lightly, especially because we have family here um, and we don't want to leave them behind. So I would highly recommend that if you're considering it, to um, consider those things. And we had heard several stories of people. I think um, we were watching a video from Tokyo Lens where he discussed people that had kind of like rushed in to living in Japan and not really prepared themselves for doing that. And we didn't want to be uh, just jumping into something and not really actually taking it seriously. So we decided to take a different approach and really dig into as many of the implications about life in general and, and work and everything that we could see. Um, and it was, you know, it was surprising. We thought we knew a lot about Japan, but we definitely learned uh, a lot more just about the intricacies of life in Japan. So. Yeah, for example, we know that when we go to apply for a job, uh, we know that we want to go for an American company inside of Japan just because the work culture in Japanese companies um, is just not one that I think is healthy for our family. Mm -hmm. So um, one of the biggest problems that we ran into right away that probably a lot of other Americans at least would have a similar problem with was pets. And oh my gosh, we uh, like just the amount of effort and extra work that it takes with pets. We love our pets dearly. We have videos just for our, our, our pets. And but man, like it's a lot of work. So we're going to make a whole video about that entire process um, after we have successfully completed it and are living in Japan with our pets. Um, but for right now, if you want a pretty detailed list of the things that we've learned, you can check out our Patreon. One of our first posts is actually a whole written out guide kind of on how you need to do it, what you need to do, and then links to all the official documentation. Um, and if you join our Patreon, you can also be in conversation with us on posts like that in our Patreon community. And you can also help support us. So there's that. That's kind of a... But we have four pets, so yes. yeah, and, and in Japan, like from from what I have heard, like pets is not as common as like in America where we, I don't know, like, oh, like I think like Everybody's all of our friends pet. have pets. Yeah. We have four pets, it's crazy. So moving to Japan when it's hard to find a place that will take pets has been difficult. So that kind of led us into a decision right up front was, we're not gonna get rid of our pets, we knew that. So we had to find housing that would accommodate the pets after we got them there, which was its own feet. And um, we quickly realized that to get a rental in Japan or anywhere like that would be virtually impossible. We actually contacted a 
uh, realtor in Tokyo that spoke English and asked him just like be please be honest with us like we're foreigners we have uh, a two slash three year old and we have three dogs and a cat mm -hmm. like is it even remotely possible that we could rent somewhere and he was very polite but he said no in effect that that would be yeah. highly difficult to find that which left us only really with the option of buying a house mm -hmm. which Buying a home in Japan is really difficult if you're a foreigner and don't have cash. Um, so because you basically need to have someone that you know that's Japanese, like a spouse um, or something like that to be able to get the financing for a home. And there are other challenges too, like trying to make sure that you have like a garden in Japan is really insane. Or like grass a, at all. A, ba a backyard or anything for dogs. I mean, I'm willing to walk my dogs to a park and stuff like that if it's somewhat close. Um, but I, I just would really like to have that backyard. Uh, I love having my dogs be able to play. In America, we have a backyard so we can just have them like run around and play outside. And, and in Japan, in Tokyo, that's not as much of a consideration that is easy to achieve. Right. Um, but yeah, we also found that space is different in japan like in america we're used to a lot bigger homes and i think like everybody knows that like everybody knows like in japan or in big cities just most big cities in general like space is not a thing you get unless you have a lot of money mm. but it really kind of it came home to us when we started doing the math on like how big square foot our house is versus and we have just a normal size house we do not have like a particularly no, fancy house no and even that compared to like like the 50 square meters it's like oh my gosh you know you're living in this little cube and it's it's just it wasn't something that we we could do we couldn't just get a small tiny house or tiny apartment we had to get something that would at least work for our family and our pets yeah so that actually led us down to how can we find housing in tokyo area or um, which actually we're not actually intending to go to Tokyo. We are open-minded to where we'll be going. Uh, we'll probably be in a major city just because that's where the American companies are going to be. But um, our aim is actually around Osaka area because we've heard that it's just more family friendly and... Um, we, we don't know of any like other YouTubers that are in Osaka. So if you know of any YouTubers that are in Osaka, like people mm -hmm. we could get plugged in with, it's like, please leave us a comment below yeah. um, with their, their channel so that we can, you know, reach out to them and see if they can give us any like tips or things about living in Osaka or just how life there is. So we'd be really interested to know that. Yeah, and so we, looking at houses and stuff, we realized that we uh, would want to purchase a home um, because apartments is just not going to work out for four pets. So it's either just wait until we have our pets pass away, which would be really sad and um, just it's not something you want to mm -hmm. do. So we're trying to work out a way we can take our pets. <laughs> and so um, we're currently looking at buying a home, which Japan is not a place that you really want to be placing a housing investment. It would be more of a consideration of like, you want to live there um, or you just want to. It's not a matter of trying to think of this as some sort of investment. Yeah, there's a whole really, really well done video by Life Where I'm From about like the, what the housing status like and the reasons behind why housing values are how they are in Japan. So mm -hmm. um, check that out, we'll link it. Um, it's, it's really interesting if you're curious about why Japanese, the Japanese housing market is the way it is. Um, so that led us to looking at housing and how we can buy a house. And as foreigners, as I mentioned, it is a little bit difficult to get a home. And so actually we haven't found any way to do it without cash. So, so there's that. And we have been like messaging like companies and stuff yeah. like that. And no one has been receptive to the idea of loaning to foreigners. They're worried that foreigners will just come in and just, you know, buy a house with their loaned money and then turn around and leave the country and not pay the note back. And so, I mean, I totally understand. 
but at the same time it sucks. So mm -hmm. it's for us. <laughs> and in America, we can't actually get an overseas loan from an American company either. We've tried that. Yep. Um, so there's just not a lot of options available other than buying in cash. So we started looking at how can we buy in cash? And we found some renovated homes that are, a, it's a little ways outside of the bigger cities, but we found homes as cheap as like 20K in USD. And so it's actually something that was livable for our family. The size is okay. Um, we might wind up needing a car, which I've heard Japanese licenses are really hard to get, but we will have an international driver's license for up to a year in Japan before we have to really buckle down and worry about the um, test. So we think that's enough time to hopefully be getting our licenses. And then uh, I'm sure some of you that know more about Japan are thinking, well, why not get an Akia or, you know, that's the word for the abandoned houses that whether you're in the mm. news, like they're free, yeah. you're super cheap. And um, we did look into that definitely. And the more we looked at it, the more we realized that they can be really cost effective, but you have to be willing to put in a lot of work to either meet the requirements for living in the Akia in the first place, which often entails like staying there for X number of years, or you have to drop a lot of money onto um, refurbing the house yeah. and uh, or be willing to do it yourself, which I would love to do that. Like, it sounds like a lot of fun, be cool. but I don't have the time or the skills uh, to invest in that if I'm trying to work. So that was just not an option for us. Well, and we don't have a place to stay in Japan while we're working on yeah. a reno renovating a property at this moment. So that wasn't something that we could really just do. And we're trying to stay within a, a good budget. So we didn't really want to have two properties at once. And we that also still leaves us with where do our pets stay right. in the meantime. So yeah, we're looking at a renovated property or a couple mm -hmm. of them, um, which we found a place called Tachitas, um, which that that has some great options that are still really cheap. Like sometimes you'll still find like Akia prices. Mm -hmm. Um, if you're just willing to have like a car or just go a little bit of extra distance outside of the, the major city and have a little bit of a commute. Mm -hmm. um, but for us, this like we, our dream is to be able to travel Japan and to be able to share that with you guys and to have adventures there. Like we've been dreaming of this since we we're kids. So for us, an uh, extra commute is not a big deal. Like this is our dream. <laughs> and if it ends up, like with me pedaling my way on a bike through the rain <laughs> and snow <laughs> for a year uh, when it's undesirable. Like that's something I'm willing to do if I have to. I'll just get a nice big poncho and then it can just be like out of, I don't know, what's an anime with a poncho and a bike? I know there's gotta be one out there. Ponyo or something. There's lots of rain in Ponyo. I'm gonna go with Totoro Ponyo. Totoro has a lot of rain. Like, I know they have umbrellas. I don't know if they have a poncho. Poncho. There's a cat bus. I don't know. There's... Is there a bike? I don't think there's... I don't think there's a bike. There's a, there's a cat bus, though. There's a cat bus. That makes up for it. Yes. Anyways. Yeah. <laughs> what were we talking about? <laughs> we're oh, yeah. Talking about yeah, pedaling our way through the snow if we have to. But the point is, yeah, we did find some options um, that could actually work for us. That said, if we do go out further away from the city, um, language barriers become more of an issue. We are currently learning Japanese. Which leads us to our next topic. <laughs> which is that um, you might want to know Japanese if you go yeah. to Japan. Go Who figure. Would have thought? <laughs> and so fortunately, we actually have some basic skills already and have been learning Japanese. Uh, I learned some in college, and then I am actively learning with our teacher, Chieko Sensei. We are actively learning. Um, from takelessons.com. Yep. And she is absolutely fantastic. I highly recommend her. She's super sweet. And uh, yeah, so I, yeah, give her a check out and like hire her if you want to learn Japanese. Um, I took Japanese in college and I've taken private lessons and the college lessons I had, while they were good and they taught me some really great information, 
Um, I've also found that the information was extremely basic and that private lessons have got us to that amount of information in probably half the amount of time and way cheaper. And she didn't have to take calculus this time. So it was yeah, a win-win for everybody. To learn Japanese. Like my major was Japanese. Why do I need calculus? I love calculus. I hate math. <laughs> It's just another language. It's, it's like just elvish. another language. It is literally elvish. Uh, it's, it's not okay. I like that. I'm all for that because I love math. If you want to say that I speak elvish. Yep. So, um, yeah, we need to know Japanese. And the reason we need to know Japanese is if you're going to live further out of the cities, which actually, even if you're living in the cities, mm -hmm. you can get around with English, but it is not something that... It, like you you would need to have some Japanese to be able to function I think because you, I think you're gonna be really isolated without having the Japanese and it's actually um, one of the reasons that we went to Japan uh, like a lot of our experiences are from a vacation that we took to Japan because that's the only time we've actually been there but we have been there and it was on purpose and one of the big reasons behind that was could we live here? Like, would we actually yeah. enjoy living here? So not only did we do a bunch of preparation research, we actually went to Japan to see, would we like it here to live here just yeah. to make sure that we would. Um, and that was, yeah, one of the things that we discovered is a lot of people say, you'd be fine with just the English you have. And as tourists, you were totally fine. But if yeah. you want to live there, it's a whole different story. Like, there's no way. I mean, if you want to make friends and have deep conversations, I'm sure you could find other foreigners if you, I don't know, pop on Facebook and look up like foreigners <laughs> in Japan. I don't know. But like, I'm sure you could find meetups and friends and stuff like that or through whatever work that you're going to be a part of. Um, however, if you don't want to be isolated and you want to reach out and make Japanese friends, I think it'll be really helpful if you can speak the language. Because um, I don't think English is as well known yeah. in Japan as some people might think that yeah. it is. And so, um, especially living out of the city where mm -hmm. Japanese is, is more heavily needed. And so, um, yeah, Japanese is going to be more needed for us because we're going to be commuting a little bit further. <laughs> so that's something that we would really... Japanese in Japan, check. Needed. Yeah, very needed. But anyway, so um, yeah, I think that's everything for today's video, but we'll keep you guys posted on what we're continuing to do with this, how it works out, because we have a lot that we get to figure out of, is this something that is actually going to be able to happen in the near future for our family, or is it something we're going to have to wait on for a, a, for a few more years? And so stay tuned and um, Hopefully we'll be back with updates that will be positive for you guys. Keep us in your thoughts and prayers. And uh, yeah, thanks for joining us and watching this video. And don't forget to like and to subscribe and hit the little bell notification so you can get those updates about our Japanese adventures and uh, getting to Japan and you can be a part of it. And leave us a comment below. Have you guys ever been to Japan? Is there, what are your dreams? Like, have, did your dreams strike you like ours did? Just like out of nowhere, you're just like, hmm, that thing since I was a child could actually be a real thing in my life. Um, yeah, we'd love to know and we'd love to keep you in this conversation. And don't forget, never stop adventuring. We'll catch you in the next video. Right, Don't copy my I hand sign. <laughs> That's why you can't do it. Cause...